just looking at all the warning lights here in the instrument cluster, it's pretty obvious what the problem is, or at least what could be the problem. So I've got a traction light on, I've got the brake light on, and I've got the ABS light on. And the two lights that I'm concerned with are the ABS and the traction, or Stabilitrack for GM. So this is a 2011 Chevy Equinox with a 2.4 liter Ecotec engine. And I'm doing a diagnostic on... As you can see here, with these, uh, the customer complaint was these warning lights were on and they weren't happy. So I'm going to take you with me and go through my strategy and troubleshooting on how I can find this problem and hopefully fix it. I'm using my Launch Pro Mini today and I'm going to scan this automatically to see what these fault codes are, see what this is, see what this is all about. <clears throat> so 2011 Chevy Equinox 2.4 liter so that's correct and then I'm just going to go into the system that I want to go into which is the electric brake control module EBCM <clears throat> let me read the fault codes Now, I already did this diagnostic before I filmed this, and then I thought this would be a good thing to film. This might help somebody, uh, a young tech or somebody who's who works on a lot of these. It might, might give them some direction. <clears throat> and so the code that I had with this code as well was another code related to an erratic signal. And from this specific sensor here, the driver's side, the left rear wheel speed sensor. And when I get two or three codes complaining about the same thing from the PCM related to the same circuit or the same sensor, I'm not going to say in every single case, but most of the time it's the sensor or that component. But you do need to do some troubleshooting to be right because this is a $300 part from Chevy. So one thing that I wanted to share with you is that if you get a fault code and, and you go, what you'll do, and this is a way to troubleshoot, and this is to see if you've got an actual hard fault. And if it is a hard fault, in this case it's showing it's a hard fault, and if when you go and you erase all the codes, this is a real good way or tip rather that I could share with you to help you figure out if this is like if you've got a cut wire or if you've got an issue with shorts to ground, shorts to voltage or something wrong with the wiring going to and from that sensor. And so what you do... <clears throat> is after you've read the codes, write them down before you erase anything, and then clear the fault code, okay? <clears throat> okay, and then, so after this step's complete, go back in and reread the fault codes. Okay, so what this tells me right here is that most likely it's going to be the sensor and most likely it is not a wiring issue or something of that nature there's no shorts to ground you're not you don't got like a severed wire or something like that or or some intermittent connection or something like that i i mean it is possible but it didn't snap back right away and tell me that we still have that same fault code for the uh low voltage uh, signal code that, that I just had there on the screen. And so what this can help you with is this can help you troubleshoot if you've actually got a sensor problem or a wiring problem, okay? So I haven't actually done any circuit integrity tests, but I'm just going to follow my instincts and my experience, and I'm going to go right to the sensor and 
do a little bit of troubleshooting and, and check the connector, make sure the connector's good. Uh, maybe the, the sensor is loose or something, I don't know. And, and that's the reason for the erratic part of it. It could be a bad CV axle if it's an all-wheel drive. And I believe this one is a front-wheel drive, so that I can rule that out right off the top. This is a little more troubleshooting that I'm going to be doing on this left rear wheel speed sensor, which was the fault code that I got relating to that sensor or that area, that circuit. And then I've got the right wheel speed sensor both here to show on this uh, my live data stream here the two PIDs that I want to look at. And so after you get the vehicle jacked up and safely supported, then you could do this test. Now this is one of many tests, but this just gives me a bit more proof that that sensor on this left rear wheel might be bad. So I'm gonna try to do this with my foot so you can see what's going on here. So as you can see that the wheel is turning, okay, and I'm going the forward, the forward way that the vehicle would be moving if it were driving, and I've got zero signal, nothing, okay. So let's go over to the right wheel in the rear, and let's see if anything's different. <coughs> And as you can see right away, I got a reading. So doing the same thing here. I'm going to turn the wheel the direction it would be moving if it was in drive. And the highest reading I observed that I could make it go was about nine. So I'm not saying that this confirms it, but this is one step closer to finding out what actually is the problem. And this gives me a bit, a bit of evidence or proof that there could be an issue with this wheel speed sensor on the driver's side or left rear wheel. I'm trying to diagnose this, uh, what I believe is a faulty wheel speed sensor on the driver's side rear. And what you're looking at in this shot is the passenger side disconnected and it had these little push-in plastic holder that I had to uh, with my pry tool clip pry tool I had to go and remove them all there's like three or four of them underneath here to get them all so I can run this harness wire over to this sensor here and so as you can see these are the the little these little push connectors here that were all across the the back here and so I've got the right side plugged in right now to the uh, the driver side rear so the left wheel so I've, I've swapped them now the reason I'm doing this is because if I still don't have a signal that what that tells me is that that the sensor there's even more proof that the sensor is bad and that I'm not receiving a signal from it because I know that the integrity of this side wiring that goes to the passenger side rear is working so then I can go further and then I can I can put a jumper wire and, and put some T-pins in here and then this is the, the left side, and then I can check the integrity from this connector all the way back to the PCM or the module for the uh, Stabilitrack ABS. And then I can see with the known good sensor over here on the passenger side rear, I can check and see if I'm getting a signal over here. So my first step in this strategy is checking to see if the known good wiring going to the PCM, the the uh, module, ABS module rather, is, I know it's good and so this sensor I suspect is bad so I sus I, I'm thinking I'm not going to see any reading. So that's what I'm expecting to see here.
I've connected the the harness wiring that goes to the um, passenger side rear and I've moved it all the way over to connect into the driver side left rear wheel speed sensor and I'm trying to see if I got a signal and I still haven't finished my testing yet because I do want to see that the integrity of the wiring is good going to the left rear speed set, wheel speed sensor but here's the test so I got it plugged in with the known good wiring harness from the uh, passenger side rear so now I've got it over on the left side so I'm going to spin the spin the wheel with my foot and I've got no reading no reading at all so what this tells me is that it that it I'm I'm pretty certain that it's the wheel speed sensor but I want to check the wire integrity by using a known good wheel speed sensor so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the um, the wires, uh, I'm going to take a jumper wire from the known good wheel speed sensor, is passenger side rear, right rear, and then run that to the wiring that goes to the left rear harness wiring that goes to the ABS module and see if I get a reading. What you see in this shot here is you see the harness that goes to the analog brake module <clears throat> for the driver side rear wheel speed sensor. And then I got a jumper wire with T-pins going all the way back and carefully make sure you get the orientation right and get the small jumper leads because these are small connectors. And so this is the known good wheel speed sensor that I was getting a signal from when I had everything connected up the right way. So what this tells me here when I do this test here as a part of my strategy in troubleshooting this problem is that if I get a signal here going to the left wheel speed sensor wiring to the ABS module then this tells me that the wire integrity is good on the driver side rear harness wiring and that the wheel speed sensor is 100% bad on the driver side rear. So I'll show you again here. This is this is the harness wiring for the left wheel speed sensor, but I'm just trying to get a known good signal to feed it into this wiring going to the ABS control module to see if the computer is seeing it. So I'm gonna do it again with my foot. And there we go. As you can see here, we got a reading. So this 100% confirms without a doubt that that wheel speed sensor is bad and that by me putting in a new one it's going to fix this problem and and the stability track and the ABS lights are all going to go out so once you get everything all routed back properly then you can go ahead and whatever broken little plastic push connectors broke you can uh, put a zip tie in its place around here it's real real convenient with this subframe here and then you can just go all the way around until you get to the end and get all your everything routed all good all the way back over